Both brain surgery and rocket science have reputations for being some of the hardest intellectual fields of work, and those reputations are well earned. The former works with the most complex structure known to man, while the latter wrangles with physics and chemistry to enable the exploration of space. It is hard to compare the two disciplines directly. Rocket scientists work in the design, development and testing of rocket engines and the vehicles that they propel, whether these are spacecraft, missiles or even jetpacks. Brain surgeons, on the other hand, apply knowledge of neuroscience and anatomy to fix brains that have gone wrong. Rocket scientists do research and development, and their findings allow engineers and mechanics to build and use the big impressive rockets that carry astronauts to the moon. Brain surgeons use the science of neuroscientists and tools developed by engineers and physicists to work at the front line of medicine. A fairer comparison would be rocket scientists versus neuroscientists or brain surgeons against rocket mechanics. We're going to put this one side and compare them anyway. Both fields are relatively new and are growing in depth and scale all the time as advancements are made. Modern rocket science began in the early 20th century, advanced substantially during World War II with the advent of guided missiles, and leapt out this world during the space race between Soviet Union and the United States that began in the 1950s. Modern brain surgery started at a similar time and has jumped rapidly from crude operations using imprecise tools to precision interventions that take advantage of the latest in biomedical tech. In the UK, training for brain surgery begins with a five-year medical degree. This is followed by two years of foundation training and then at least eight more years of neurosurgical training. There are different routes into rocket science, but most begin with a three- or four-year degree. Some follow up with a PhD, Doctor of Philosophy, but it is possible to enter the field without a university education via an apprenticeship. Brain surgeons are responsible for the lives of their patients and operate on the most complex structure in the human body. Steady hands and millimeter precision are required. This is life and death work. These scientists work on multi-million pound projects to send the latest tech into space. Most missions are unmanned, but some carry crew. Others work in defense, critical for protecting soldiers and civilians. The human brain is exquisitely complex, containing an estimated 86 billion neurons. Our understanding of its biology is incomplete, but brain surgeons are effective in their roles regardless. Rocket science is based on physics and formulae, with hundreds of years of research to draw upon. But rocket scientists work at the edge of this knowledge, combining several scientific disciplines. Brain surgeons have treated hundreds or thousands of people with conditions ranging from brain cancer to epilepsy, changing the lives not only of their patients, but also of their families and friends. Rocket scientists are the brains behind every space mission that has ever launched. Their work took men to the moon, carried rovers to Mars, and put up every single communications satellite in orbit. The starting salary for a newly qualified doctor is about £23,000 a year in the UK, but a consultant surgeon can earn over £100,000. This includes working nights, weekends, and on call. The salary for an aerospace engineer starts at around £22,000 in the UK and can rise to over £60,000 with years of experience. The highest paid NASA engineers can earn over $150,000, more than £120,000. 
Brain surgeons operate on the most complex structure known to humans. Neurosurgeons are responsible for the treatment of disorders of the brain and spinal cord. It's an area of medicine that has evolved from crude practices like lobotomy to intricate operations performed under microscopes with the assistance of robots. The field is notoriously complex and many surgeons choose to specialize in a particular area, including neuro-oncology, tumors, pediatric neurosurgery for babies and children, children, functional neurosurgery, chronic diseases like epilepsy, neurovascular surgery, aneurysms and blood vessel disorders, or traumatology, head injuries. And surgery only makes up a part of a brain surgeon's week. They can spend a couple of days in theater, but the remainder of the time is often spent working with patients outside of the operating room. They attend clinics to diagnose and monitor and conduct word rounds to follow up on their patients after they've been operated on. Many operations typically involve removing a section of the skull and stapling it back into place, but as the field advances, surgeons are working with smaller and smaller incisions. A combination of scans and microscopes help the team to find the correct location during surgery by magnifying brain tissue and revealing areas of damage invisible to the naked eye. And if the area can't be accessed easily, flexible cameras, called endoscopes, can be used. These are equipped with surgical tools allowing surgeons to get at hard-to-reach areas with minimal disruption. Endoscopes are generally used for surgery at the base of the brain and the camera is threaded through a coin-sized hole in the skull or through the mouth or nose. Scans guide the probe and robotics can be used to steady the camera as biopsies are taken or tumors are carefully removed. Another option is non-invasive surgery with a tool called a gamma knife replacing the typical stainless steel scalpels. This process involves the use of beams of gamma radiation to deliver high doses of radiotherapy to specified areas of the brain while sparing as much of the surrounding healthy tissue as possible. As technology advances, simulation is set to become an invaluable tool in a brain surgeon's arsenal. Computer models will allow doctors of the future to predict the effects of surgery before they do it, taking into account the impact different cuts would have on healing time and side effects. Virtual or augmented reality systems could one day allow surgeons to step inside 3D maps of their patients' brains before and even during surgery. When people think of rocket science, they most often think of space, but the field deals with the physics and engineering of anything powered by rocket engines. This includes missiles, aircraft, spacecraft, and technically, fireworks. Some of the very earliest rockets were tubes filled with cakes of gunpowder, used by the Chinese as weapons as early as 1132. The powder contains carbon, the fuel, potassium nitrite, the oxidizer, and a bit of sulfur which helps to get the reaction going. As the gunpowder burns, it creates gas which shoots out of the back of the tubes as exhaust. This exhaust propels the rocket forwards. Adding metal oxides to the mix creates colorful firework displays. Modern rocketry is based on the same principles, but it didn't really get started until the early 1900s. Rockets contain fuel and an oxidizer and work by funneling exhaust gas through a nozzle. The nozzle is designed to let the gas expand and cool before it escapes, allowing more energy to be extracted by the engine. The earliest rockets were based on solid fuel and these are still used to provide powerful, consistent thrust, but the power output can't be controlled or switched off. Newer liquid fuel engines get around this problem but come with complicated pipe systems and the fuel is heavy and therefore a lot more expensive. A rocket scientist's job focuses on using expertise across the scientific disciplines to find a balance. Whether it's working out the right combination of rocket stages required to lift a satellite, or developing a new nozzle from lighter materials that can still handle heat, they develop, test and refine rocket engines to make them cheaper, safer, lighter, more powerful and more efficient. To do this, they not only need to understand the chemistry of the propellants, they also need knowledge of engineering, aerodynamics and the physics of flight. And with test launches of new technology being expensive and dangerous, much of the development work involves small-scale models and computer simulations. 
This allows researchers to run multiple tests, tweaking lots of different conditions to come up with the optimal solution before it's ever tested in reality, but it adds an extra layer of complexity to the job. Advances in rocket engines are going to be crucial as space exploration projects become ever more complex and ambitious, and rocket scientists are the people who are going to make it all happen. A blood clot could develop during or after surgery, potentially obstructing blood supply to part of the brain. It's critical to keep everything sterile to prevent infection inside the brain. The brain is covered with a rich network of blood vessels, so surgeons use clamps and cuffs to minimize bleeding. The brain can swell after surgery, and sometimes the flap of bone is left off for a few days to allow it to subside. Patients can experience seizures during surgery, particularly if they are conscious while the operation is taking place. The brain is cushioned by cerebrospinal fluid and this can leak out during and after surgery, causing headaches and blurred vision. Surgery can be risky and part of a brain surgeon's job is to inform family members when operations don't go well. Surgeons work within millimeter margins, but surgery can cause damage to senses, speech, memory and muscle control. Rocket scientists need to master complex equations to enable their engines to perform advanced maneuvers. Launching rockets is expensive, so rocket scientists develop computer programs and small-scale models to test their ideas. To ensure the rocket's payload will be able to reach its destination, scientists have to consider and work to a mission's optimal launch window, which takes the target's relative speed and position compared to Earth into account. Launches are expensive, so rocket scientists are constantly working on ways to reuse components to bring costs down. Launch is only half the battle. Moving craft in space means using principles and equipment that will work in a vacuum. Thrusters reach temperatures in the thousands of degrees. They need to handle the heat without weighing the rocket down. Rockets need to be as light as possible, but they must also hold up to the stresses of liftoff. Options include liquid hydrogen, kerosene and solid boosters. Different combinations work for different situations. The bigger a rocket is, the heavier it gets and the more gravity pulls it down. It's a fine balance. There's no doubt that both rocket science and brain surgery require some serious thinking power, but it's perhaps unfair that they're singled out as the toughest disciplines in science and medicine. The truth is none of the achievements made would have been possible without biologists, chemists, physicists, mathematicians and engineers working in other fields. Rocket scientists build upon decades of scientific inquiry to push the boundaries of human knowledge and develop the technology of tomorrow, while brain surgeons also put research to good use, applying it in the treatment of their patients, often saving lives. It's safe to say that both are tackling enormous mental challenges and their work is only going to become more complicated as time goes on.